Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we have another episode of a TV show that never launched, and it's titled Luke and the Tenderfoot. It stars Edgar Buchanan and Carlton Carpenter. And our guest star in this episode is Charles Bronson in a very early role. This is from 1955. The title of this episode is the John Wesley Harden story. And as you've learned by now, if you watch the first episode of Luke and the Tenderfoot, is, well, Edgar Buchanan's character is kind of a wheeler dealer, and he sells merchandise and doesn't always give the full truth about the condition of the merchandise. And Carlton Carpenter is a little naive, but he, uh, he's catching on. Thank you for joining us. Get ready, here it comes. Enjoy. Yes, sir, I've seen them all in my time. Texas John Slaughter, Billy the Kid, the Dalton Boys, John Wesley Harden. They soon will be seeing the town the Top Gun came from. John Wesley Harden. He's killed a lot of men, hasn't he? 28 for the last count. Some people say he's the most vicious animal on two legs. Not me. He's my bosom friend. He eats out of my hand like a lamb. How'd you ever manage to get acquainted with him? Saved his life one time, Piney Ridge, Wyoming. They had him boxed in. I snuck up and pointed my shotgun at him. Did you ever see Billy the Kid draw? See him. I don't want this to get around, but I taught him. You did? Yeah, to my younger in those days. Mr. Herkimer, would you teach me to draw? Don't do that. I want a gun. I want to buy a gun. Why, well, I never heard of such such unadulterated nonsense in my life. Well, everybody else was this one. Everybody else ain't a tenderfoot. Now, how old was Billy the Kid when you taught him to draw? Oh, I see. Go ahead, one chance of that. You trying to get sassy with me? I just want to know how old he was. He, he was going on 35. Couldn't live that long. Didn't live that? Oh, you're probably thinking of William Bonner, the man Pat Garrett killed. Yeah, they called him Billy the Kid, too. No, this was Billy the Kid Bloodsworth. Never heard of him. Well, don't admit it. Show your ignorance. Yeah, there's six or seven Billy the Kids before and after Bonner. I still want a gun, Mr. Herkimer. Someday I'm going to be a famous gunfighter. I told you to stop doing that. We ain't got money enough to buy a gun. Well, when we get it, I'm getting one. John Wesley Harden. This 
Game's over. Everybody clear out. Pushed around. Now you clear out. I guess you didn't hear Mr. Harden tell everybody to get out, huh? Go. said everybody my wife's still out you give word to her that I want to talk to her Wesley Harden just heard in the town. He's over in the saloon. We've got to get to him right away. I wouldn't go over there if I was you. He'll kill anybody who comes near that saloon. Shot two men last time he's in town. And now you just calm down. Hey, Wes can take care of himself. What is it you're really so anxious about? I want to meet Wes Harden. I want to meet up with him face to face. Yeah, the truth comes out now, don't it? I'm going in that saloon with or without you. Just a minute. You see all them people standing there? Afraid to go near that saloon. You go in there and you'll get your head blowed right off your shoulder. Oh, not if I tell him I'm with you and you're right here. Yeah, but Wes is forgetful sometimes. He might shoot first and listen later. Well, I'm going. Mr. Herkimer, are you coming or not? No, I'm not coming. You ain't going either. Well, I may never get another chance to meet him. Pete, come back here. Pete, wait up. Hey, Pete, I ain't as young as I once was. My mind plays tricks on me. Maybe that wasn't Wes Harden I met that time. Well, you saved his life once. He ought to be real glad to see you. Pete, ain't you listening to me? Mr. Harden! Luke Kirkhamer's out here! Did you hear me, Mr. Harden? Your old friend, Luke Kirkhamer! Wes, it's me. I guess that's what you wanted to hear with the sound of my voice, wasn't it? Sure, that's what he wanted to hear. We ain't armed, Wes. Me and the boy want to come in and talk to you. Come ahead. What's the matter with everybody? Mr. Herkimer, aren't you going to say something? You know these characters, Wes? Wes, I'll be here. That's a song before my life. Hey, that's old Wes, all right. Always making with the jokes. Pretends he doesn't know you. Just to have yourself a little fun. <laughs> I said I don't know you. See, he, he can almost make you believe it. <laughs> Mr. Harden, I've been wanting to meet you ever since I first heard about you. Is this your grandfather, kid? Grandfather? Oh, he's the peddler man. We <laughs> travel together. Don't you remember him? He saved your life back in Piney Ridge, Wyoming. Uh, sure he remembers me. Boys from Boston, tenderfoot. 
I've never been in Piney Ridge, Wyoming before. But I have met plenty of big belly braggarts who claim all kinds of things that never happened. And I hate braggarts almost as much as I hate cowards. <laughs> He's a very witty man. He might keep us up for hours. Hey, Wes, remember those little slight hand tricks of mine? Remember the coin trick? Going through the handkerchief without putting a hole in it? <laughs> Either one of you boys got a dollar. Oh, hey, here. I'll use a quarter I got here. <laughs> oh. Mr. Hardin, can I uh, fix your drink? Just a minute now. This is my friend here, Mr. Sandy Burke. You fetch him a drink, too. Yes, sir, Mr. Hardin, I'm going to get me a gun. I'm going to be a gunfighter just like you. Of course, uh, not so famous as you. Boy, I ought to take a thing like that over. Wes has had a real hard life, ain't you, Wes? I enjoyed every minute of it, kid. How about you, Bert? Women, money, and respect. That's what a fast gun buys you, kid. Nobody gets in your way. You want to hear about you? Hey, get your face on posters. Wanted dead or alive. You shut your mouth, old man. Hey, Hart! Here's your wife. She didn't want to come here. We made her. We want you to take her and get out of town. Hold your fire. We're pushing her in. These two? Never saw them before. Do you know my wife? Yes, I know Stella. They think I look like her. That's why they picked me. Why doesn't she come to see me? I think you know. All I want to do is talk to her. She and the boy need money. Why doesn't she come over here and get it? She won't and she never will. My boy. How is he? little on the thin side. Well, you tell her I want to see her. I risked a lot coming here and I want to see her. Now, you tell her that. You and the old man, get these eggs bounty hunters out of here. And tell that crowd to get off the street. <laughs> Changed a bit. Know him anywhere. When we first went in there, you didn't even seem to know which one of them was Wes. What's that? Oh, just a shock of seeing him after all this time. That ain't what it looked like. I don't go jumping to conclusions. Well, did you know him before? What do you think? I don't believe you did. Boy, when you start losing faith in me... Well, I'm losing it. Fast. Is everything you've been telling me lies? What lie did I ever tell you? About saving John Wesley Harden's life back in Piney Ridge, Wyoming. Well, you think that was a lie, do you? Try to tell me that you saw Harden in the saloon, that you were talking to him. Yeah, hey, Wes, a friend of mine. Well, what are his plans? How long does he intend to stay in town? You know, he ain't got a marshal. It's a peaceful town. Nobody even wears a gun. Think he might hold up the bank? Wes, don't rob banks. Don't rob nobody. Just kills people. He ain't got a bad fault that way. How do we get rid of him? You ask the right man the right question. I'm going to tell you how to handle him. I've got a little scheme all worked out. You see, Wes, trust me. That's the key to the whole situation. What he doesn't know is that I'm going to get him, on account of the way he shot them poor innocent bounty hunters. Man's got to be vicious to do a thing like that. But I'm going to need cooperation. 
We'll need the cooperation of all of you. Well, what kind of cooperation? I want a few men with guns to cover the front of the saloon. I want guns on the rooftops across the street. Guns in the windows, guns in the streets. Then? I'll trick him and that other fellow into coming out. Make him think it's safe. What do you figure to get out of this? Half the reward money, town keep the other half. We'll be ready in about 30 minutes. Now you're going to betray him. You think an experienced man like Wes Harden is going to walk right out into an army of guns? They think he will. That's what I want him to think. Wes! I want to talk to you. Are you on good, Wes? Boy, me are coming in. For my own good, huh? I ain't telling you no lies, Wes. You still haven't forgotten what great friends we are, have you? No, hey. You saying I'd be friends with a mangy old mongrel like you, huh? Well, Wes don't mean it. He's just in a bad mood because he had to kill them two men. Wes, he, he, you'd better take a quick peek out front. Guns every place. He's right. Who town's that after you, Wes? I hate a town. It makes a woman act as a decoy for a couple of vicious, no good bounty hunters. You try to go out that way, Wes, and they'll blow you to bits. I've been thinking. I got a way out for you. Let's hear it. You got any money? The man gets paid for his work. You'll get paid. Let's hear it. In advance? Five hundred dollars? Hey, there's a back way into the saloon leads into a side street. There's room enough in my peddler's wagon for one man to hide. How do I get out? He said one man. I'll take the wagon around back town and come in on the side street. Now listen, peddler man, you're not going to leave me here to face this mob. said one man. I thought Mr. Burke was your friend. Get in my business, you have no friends. I could kill you and take that wagon myself. He would look so innocent rolling down the road with you at the range. Come on, Pete, we'll see what we can do. What's that for? We're going to go out front and make up some excuse, keep waiting for an hour or so. For a minute, you ain't going any place. Maybe they'll start shooting, storm the place. We'd be miles away even before they found out you was gone. All right. The kid stays with me. And don't you try anything fancy. Take a little longer than I figured. How long? An hour or two, maybe longer. We can wait.
Hey, George. Where's he going? I think we got to find out. Going somewhere? Hey, Wes Harden's a dangerous man. You think I'm going to get caught in the same town after he finds out I betrayed him? But you were going to split the reward money. Put it in my account in your bank. Pick it up on the next trip. Well, you're in no danger. If Wes Harden comes out of that saloon, he's a dead man. You know that. You can't tell about a man like Wes. He may begin to break out any minute now. I swear I saw them doors start to open. Hey! Go. I think he's doing us a favor. There isn't going to be any shooting. your horse and I figured it looked too suspicious. Plenty of ranches around here. I'll get a horse. I'll buy one with part of that $500 I gave you. I ain't got it no more. Hand it over. I figured on this, Wes. Figured you'd be asking for it. So I loaned it out. Here, read that to him. I owe you $500. Signed, Mrs. Stella Harden. Figured she needed it pretty bad. A lot worse than any of us. What kind of an old coot are you? You ought to know. Piney Ridge, Wyoming. Smith here. You know, I gave that old man a hard time today. But like he said, I was ribbing him. Well, you should have seen him at Piney Ridge. He stood off ten Indians all by himself. Yeah. He's kind of old and sort of funny looking. But he's one of the best men I've ever known. What's the town going to say about us? Yeah, we done him a favor. He might have killed three or four of them. He won't go far. No gunman ever does. Next week or the next one, some sheriff will get him. You still think you want to buy a gun and strap it on you? Oh, I changed my mind. Mr. Herkimer, I owe you an apology. Oh, shucks, boy. I almost lost faith in you. <laughs> you and me will stick together. We'll work things out. You know, I don't care whether you knew Wes Harden before or not. You mean you still don't believe it after hearing him say it? I don't care one way or the other. I don't care one little bit. <laughs> of an almost lost, almost forgotten television show. Richard Jekyll even made an appearance in this, and Charles Bronson in such an early role. This would have made a very interesting series. It's kind of a shame it didn't launch, but just like this show, we have hundreds more episodes of shows 
that have almost been lost and almost forgotten. Thank you for joining us for the Forsaken Westerns. We hope you'll join us again next time. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.